10 years of daily equals one hell of a ride for readers everywhere. With the publication of The Death of Remembrance, we celebrate 10 years since DCI Daily walked onto the page. It also marks the incredible milestone of 10 books published in this series, and we look forward to our favourite character on screen in a major TV series starring Game of Thrones actor Rory McCann. Author Denzel Myrick hails from Campbelltown in the Kintyre Peninsula, and has risen rapidly to become one of the UK's most popular crime writers. A natural storyteller, he built his reputation on the dramatic settings of his books, taking crime out of the dark city settings to the small towns of the Highlands and the island communities of Scotland, as well as the extraordinary strength and depth of his characters. Readers across the globe adore his infectious humour, applied with the lightest touch. The story begins with Whiskey from Small Glasses, first published by Polygon in 2012. When the body of a young woman is washed up on an idyllic beach on the west coast of Scotland, DCI Jim Daly is dispatched from Glasgow to lead the investigation. This first novel introduces the world to the partnership between DCI Jim Daly and DS Brian Scott, instantly capturing readers' hearts. Kinlock. The town was situated on a peninsula 150 miles away from Glasgow, on Scotland's rugged west coast. Alternatively, miles away from anywhere, as Fraser had come to think of it. The Last Witness ramps up the action with a criminal empire headed by James Mackey, who is set on revenge even beyond the grave. Daly must move fast to uncover how a dead man could commit murder, what he's planning next, and how to protect his friend D.S. Scott, who has a target on his head. The still water of the sea loch below appeared more viscous than it should as it reflected the winter landscape. The scene was calm and glorious. Daly hadn't noticed all of this on the way up, concentrating as he had been on reaching the summit without it expiring. But he had to admit that his surroundings, and even to some extent the experience of hill walking, stimulating. The third book in the series, Dark Suits and Sad Songs, plunges daily into the murky world of politics when a senior civil servant spectacularly takes his life in the Kinloch Harbour. Ritual assassinations, strange lights in the sky above the town, dark forces abound and Daly's world is in meltdown. He was sitting in a low chair in the cramped lounge of the fisherman's cottage. The room was dark, a haze of pipe smoke obscuring the old man who sat in a wooden rocking chair. A yellowing canvas depicting a fishing boat struggling through heavy seas hung over an old-fashioned iron fireplace. The Ratstone Serenade takes a sinister turn involving cursed land and an ancient society emerging from the blizzard, revealing grisly secrets and ghosts of the past. This novel explores how the other half live with the untold wealth of the Shannon family, who live on a clifftop mansion in Kinlaw. But the curse is coming for them, and Daly must solve the macabre jigsaw before death comes for them all. His father had told him stories of the castle that once sat on the clifftop, facing the cold depths fearlessly from its tall perch. The boy was bewitched by the thoughts of olden days. To think his ancestors had once lived there, on the high rock, in times when men had swords and fought battles. Now, there were only a few stones left. An earthly reminder of times past. We are transported back to the Second World War for the fifth novel, Well of the Winds, when a man is stabbed to death on the shoreline of Kinloch, while in the present day, a family goes missing from their farm on the tiny isle of Gersay. Assisted by his indomitable deputy, DS Brian Scott, and new boss, Chief Superintendent Carrie Symington, Daly must solve a wartime murder to uncover the shocking events of the past and the present. Daly read a request from the local high school that he might give a talk to fifth-year students as to the merits of a career in the police. Much as he liked to encourage the young, he made a mental note to make his excuses and leave the task to someone else. How could he try to persuade someone with their whole life in front of them to devote it to staring at dead bodies? 
and dealing with the worst humanity had to offer. In the relentless tide, Professor Frank Holm and her team of archaeologists find the remains of three women on a remote Kintyre hillside, a site rumoured to have been the base of Viking warlord Summerled. However, their delight soon turns to horror when they realise the woman tragically met their end little more than two decades ago. This is a tale of death, betrayal, Viking treasure, and revenge set in the thin places where past, present, and future collide. Beyond the big picture window, the lights of Kinloch twinkled under their counterparts in the midnight blue sky. The loch rippled in the light, the new moon illuminating the island at its head a shaft of light as, as though by celestial design. The arrival of a luxury cruiser in A Breath on Dying Embers puts the pressure on Daly, as the UK government are taking a high-powered group of businessmen and women on a tour of the British Isles before one of the crew goes missing. DS Brian Scott comes to the fore, replete with a temporary promotion, as he and Daly fight to save the lives of those on board the cruiser. They say it's hard to hate for a lifetime. That old age turns angry, turbulent youths into servile, contented old men, the fire in their eyes long extinguished. I don't agree. Laugh out loud humour and gritty violence collide in Jeremiah's Bell, the eighth novel in the DCI Daily series. It follows a reclusive family living in a remote part of the Kintar Peninsula who harbour a grisly secret, and a rich hotelier who has arrived in town hell-bent on revenge for past injustice. Daly's team must race against time to expose long-held secrets and shameful lies before there are any more victims. You'd seen this place in all its moods. The soothing blankets of snow that made the world look soft and forgiving. The bright days like this one when he could easily have been standing on a Mediterranean coast. Or the last couple of days, when it looked as though the wrath of God could be visited upon at any moment. Broiling dark seas, flinging massive waves against the cliffs and hills like clenched fists battering an unprotected face. When a light aircraft crash lands at Macri Airport in the opening pages of For Any Other Truth, DCI Jim Daly and his colleague Brian Scott rush to the scene, but it soon becomes clear that both occupants of the plane were dead before takeoff. The action spills over the sea to County Antrim as the stakes get ever higher, packing an emotional punch. The big front doors of the hotel were shut tight against the world. Everything looked so familiar, but nothing was the same. The blue lights on the till shone brightly in the subdued light. A tap dripped into a steel sink below the bar. Beerfront stood sentry along its length, as though protecting the array of spirits marching along the gantry. But one spirit was gone for good. The tenth novel in this best-selling series, The Death of Remembrance, is the work of a master storyteller at the very top of his game. In 1983 Glasgow, a beat constable walks away from a bar where he knows a crime is about to be committed. It is a decision that will haunt him for the rest of his life. In the present, a fisherman is found dead by Kinloch shoreline, and a stranger with a deadly mission moves into town. As past and present collide, DCI Jim Daly must confront old friends, new foes, and ghosts who will not be silenced. Glasgow was becoming the meritocracy of which everyone had once dreamed. But the nature of merit had never been specified, so now, as long as they had plenty of cash, the city no longer segregated its less desirable citizens into crumbling tenements, swaying high-rise flats or dolorous schemes. This new novel and all the others are available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. You can purchase them directly from the Berlin website at www.berlin.co.uk, from your local bookshop, or from your preferred online retailer. <laughs>